It is an early winter morning in Delhi. On a usual day, this is when Ravinder Singh Rathore starts warming up his car, preparing it for passenger pickup. But November has been unusual. His diesel taxi has been sitting idle all month. अभी ये ग्रैप थ्री ग्रैप फोर चलता है जब अभी ग्रैप थ्री चल रहा है अब ग्रैप थ्री में इसको बैन कर दिया अब ये खड़ी है अभी जब खुलेगा तब ये चलेगी अब वो कब खुलेगा कब सरकार हटाएगी नहीं पता ग्रैप और द ग्रेडेड रिस्पॉन्स एक्शन प्लान थ्री बैंस पेट्रोल एंड डीजल व्हीकल्स under bs3 and 4 emission standards from plying on roads for ravinder who bought his car a year and a half ago the capital's winter pollution control protocol naturally means a loss of business koi bhi gaadi ho jaise ab ye 19 model hai iski 42000 rupees installment hai per day ka 1500 rupees ho gaya मकान का किराया देना है घर में बच्चों का जो रेगुलर खर्चा है बच्चों की फीस है तो मैंने भी बताया कि आप इसको सबको अगर काउंट करें तो रोज का ढाई से तीन हज़ार रुपये का लॉस है अब अगर दस दिन भी खड़ी हो गई तो तीस पैंतीस हज़ार रुपये का जो हमें नुकसान होगा ये हम कहाँ से कवर करेंगे Research tells us that vehicles are among the top polluters in Delhi, contributing to nearly 47% of PM 2.5 in the air. Over the years, Delhi has been through several rounds of trial and error to address vehicular pollution. From the odd even scheme to nighttime truck bans to grab restrictions, but little has stuck. In 2024, the government took another swing. a scrappage push ordering all diesel vehicles over 10 years of age and petrol vehicles over 15 years to be scrapped or deregistered the controversial move has critics questioning the very basis of the policy the age of a vehicle instead of the emission it generated uh, i am the owner of a, of a vehicle which was sold when it was in best of its fitness meeting all the pollution norms but because it was 10 years old i had to sell it to someone in punjab environmentalist chandrabhushan was amongst those made to sell his bs4 diesel vehicle recently uh, uh, the criteria for for scrappage uh, should be based on fitness whether the vehicle is safe to run or not on pollution parameter whether it is meeting the pollution parameter or not and lastly whether you know the number of vehicles on the road the other criteria which is actually also used in many countries is how many vehicles you want on your roads delhi's wide mix of primary transport options is also its burden from buses and trucks to cars and autos to two wheelers Despite the government's push towards electrifying the sector, the share of EVs on Delhi's roads is barely at 8%. The government is still hopeful of changing this to 95% percentage by 2027. Potential as far as the potential is concerned, I think this schemes are there or uh, cities are trying to build infrastructure, but still this electrification is uh, the rate is not changing that much so i think it's a time to take a pause to do the assessment what are understand what are the challenges and should we really uh, you know put so much efforts into this or we should just opt for low carbon mobility options which are walk bus and cycle Even as Delhi struggles with its pollution levels and electrification targets continue to stagger hugely, auto experts are beginning to see promise in an alternative: the concept of retrofitting. Cheaper than buying a new electric vehicle and claimed to be more viable, retrofitting in the EV universe basically means converting an existing internal combustion engine or ICE to an electric one.
On this dusty morning, with the AQI hovering around 300, we reach Noida to check out how this actually works. This aging diesel truck is one of eight others lined up to get retrofitted. We are in the workshop of a technology company that provides electric transport solutions. Look, when you want to, you know, go towards electric vehicles, look at an existing truck. You know, the chassis, the cabin, the body can all be reused. The only thing that is really causing the pollution problem is this engine, right? So what we do is we remove these polluting components. We install a brand new electric powertrain and drivetrain and convert an ICE truck into a smart zero emissions truck. This is our HV Junction box. You can see this is basically power to distribute power. DC power to distribute power. This is a battery supply and it is multiple channels. IX Energy's 15-member team can convert a truck in two weeks at a roughly 40% lower cost than buying a new electric truck. So let's say a similar category truck will cost about 28 lakh rupees from a, a OEM. Our truck uh, will cost maybe about 19 lakh rupees. The car will give you a lot of range. और ये एक घंटे में चार्ज होने वाली गाड़ी है और ये हम एक स्पेसिफिक कस्टमर के लिए बना रहे हैं जिसकी नीड नहीं क्यों है वो और रेटर पेटर में एक एंड ऑटो दे भी है कि तुम अगर हमें बोलता है कि आप कस्टमाइज भी कर दो तो हम इसके हिसाब से गाड़ी बना के दे सकते हैं जो ओएम नहीं है Kuldeep Singh, technical team lead at IX Energy, tells us how retrofitting is like giving old trucks a second lease of life. Their lifespan could extend by 5 to 7 years. धीरे धीरे क्या होता है डीजल इंजन मेंटेनेंस का डिमांड बढ़ जाता है जैसे गाड़ियाँ पाँच साल छः साल पुरानी हो जाती हैं तो उसमें मेंटेनेंस का खर्चा बहुत ज़्यादा है अगर आप उसे ईवी में कन्वर्ट कर लेते हो तो आप जैसे व्हीकल की चेसी है जो शहरों में चल रही है उनकी चेसी काफ़ी क्वालिटी काफ़ी अच्छी है अगर आप उन्हें इलेक्ट्रिक पावर ट्रेन कर दो तो आपका सीधा कॉस्ट बारह रुपये पर किलोमीटर से फोर रुपये पर किलोमीटर पर शिफ्ट हो जाता है The company, which works largely in the commercial segment, has retrofitted 20 vehicles so far and claims its biggest advantage is its cost effectiveness. In terms of maintenance, uh, the, the, uh, the cost per kilometer comes down by one third. So typically in di uh, diesel or CNG vehicle, it is uh, uh, taken as 1.2 rupees per kilometer. In, in case of electric, it is even lesser than 1.4 rupees per kilometer. It seems to be the price points that are slowly beginning to drive retrofitting in other parts of the country as well. In Coimbatore, Nikendra Manikandan Senthil founded his auto tech company while he was still a student. Frustrated by rising auto fares, he built a patented 90-minute conversion process that turns conventional auto rickshaws into EVs. It, it comes down to the age of the vehicle and, and the condition of the vehicle, right? But at least case, uh, we can ensure that the vehicle, uh, once converted, can ply for five years comfortably. On average, Nikendra tells us, an auto rickshaw driver earns less than 500 rupees a day. For most, buying a new electric rickshaw at about 4 lakh rupees is not an easy purchase. Retrofitting would cost them about half of that. Secondary battery There's no down payment, right? And when he converts, he's seeing a, a net uh, a net savings of about five thousand rupees every month, right? And we we presume it will go on for three years, right? For the tenure of the finance, and then for the rest of the life cycle, he'll be making ten to twelve thousand rupees every month. The retrofitted autos deliver a 180-kilometer range and a 60-minute recharge time. But despite the benefits and state clearances, the government still seems hesitant, experts say. Uh, so, uh, for uh, retrofitting, uh, there is not a uh, positive response uh, from the government side if uh, we take uh, example of retrofitting of buses because they find that, you know, rather than doing all these things, better to switch to new bus and uh, you know have a better bus there are uh, 
uh, doubts in their mind that whether uh, the retrofitted bus will give the same uh, experience like older buses or the, or the full electric bus or not. So there are uh, these doubts in government officials' mind. A 2022 Terry study points out that when it comes to scrapping end-of-life vehicles, the current infrastructure and financial bandwidth is not equipped to handle large-scale scrappage. In that context, retrofitting could serve as a more viable push towards circularity. Our concept is very Indian at its nature that look, use and throw is a very Western concept, doesn't make sense for us to go down that path. If the body, the chassis, the cabin is refurbished, then it can be extended for another 10, 15, 20 years. Why not do so? It is environmentally beneficial, it is economically cheaper. So it, it, it makes eminent sense that there is a retrofit policy that is actually encouraged in India. Delhi aims to retrofit 3% of older vehicles by 2026, but the all-important state push seems to be lacking. Without proper policy, standardized regulations and limited incentives, it might be cumbersome to retrofit at scale. Currently, there are only about 27 certified retrofitters for two, three and four-wheelers operating across the country. Anshu, who also serves as Secretary of the Indian Automotive Retrofit Association, points out how current conditions actually make buying a new EV an easier option. If government wants electrification at a mass scale, then they need to promote retrofits and for that to happen, they need to simplify the rules for certification and the testing agencies. We are trying to lobby with the government that look, if we have you know, uh, installed brand new powertrain and drive train in this vehicle, then this vehicle should be considered at par with a newer, newer vehicle rather than an old vehicle, right? So the insurance and all the other uh, associated uh, uh, benefits can be obtained by retrofitment also. Considering the fact that retrofitting is still a new concept, users often struggle with insurance and financing, mainly because of risk-averse lenders and the lack of historical data for EV conversions. Most insurance products today are built for factory-made EVs, not converted ones. Among IX Energy's customers is Indian consumer goods company Dabur, that has hired a small number of retrofitted trucks for its fleets. We were actually uh, experimenting with different technologies, EV, CNG, etc. And uh, on the way, we also got to know about the retrofit vehicles. We found this technology to be more sustainable than probably the EVs also, because these are old vehicles which we are trying to you know, recycle by retrofit. So that's how we uh, thought that it will be worth to experiment with this technology also. Back in Dwarka, we asked Ravinder what he thought about switching to an electric vehicle. जब अभी तक आप CNG को कन्वर्ट नहीं कर, कंट्रोल नहीं कर पाए आज भी पंपों पे लाइन लगी होती है आज भी ऐसा नहीं है कि आप गए पेट्रोल भराया और चले गए अभी भी आपको तो ईवी को आप इतना प्रमोट कर रहे हैं पर ईवी को चार्जिंग स्टेशन तो दीजिए चार्ज एंजाइटी इज स्टिल अ वैलिड फियर अमंगस्ट मोस्ट इन द कंट्री India's public EV charging infrastructure is currently at about one charger per 235 electric vehicles. This despite the Delhi government stating, through its own study, how converting 5 lakh existing vehicles to electric could cut down 4.8 million tonnes of CO2. For now, these are just numbers. Out of 8 lakh plus trucks sold in India in 2024, about 6,000 were electric vehicles. If we are thinking about a net zero economy, and obviously automobile sector is at the center of this transformation. Instead of buying new vehicle, if I can retrofit and upgrade my existing vehicle, environmentally speaking, it is superior. So uh, I, from environmental perspective, retrofitting makes uh, absolute sense till the vehicle is safe. Uh, it makes sense for cars, uh, it makes sense for buses and trucks, 
uh, and uh, is something that we should be thinking very seriously about. Thanks for watching Eco India. If you like the story, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to scroll.in on YouTube.